Oh, Lizzie is the host. <laughs> because she's the host. That, that's what it yeah, is. Because, yes. I'm wondering why Lizzie is the host. <laughs> Okay, so the the object the object is the projectile. Okay, the object to be thrown is a projectile, and then the motion of the object, the motion of the object is what we are calling as a projectile motion. Okay, now we saw that in one. Hello. This one. Please mute yourself. Please check and then mute yourselves. Okay. This I'm coming. Hello. Chrysla. Yeah. Please mute yourself. Mute it. So the object is a projectile. And then the motion of the object is what we call as projectile motion. Now, under one dimensional projectile motion, we saw that the velocity of the object horizontally, velocity horizontally, the velocity of the object horizontally, what happens to it is what? Yes, I'm waiting. What? What is the what is the nature of the velocity of the object horizontally? Quick one. Say that you are talking. The motion of the uh, the velocity of the object horizontally is Aquia and Co. Please, those of you who were here yesterday. It's what? It's constant. constant. Now, why is it constant? constant. Yes. Why is it constant? What? Why is it constant? Because, because it's not affected gravity. Because gravity is not affected, affecting the object horizontally. Air resistance, good. Air resistance is also neglected. Thank you. Now, when we look at the velocity of the object vertically. Vertically, what happens to the velocity of the object? Say that, mute yourself. Yes, what happens to the velocity of the object vertically? It starts from zero and then increases as, it's, as it Good. goes down. Exactly, so vertically, the velocity increases and so the object accelerates velocity changes and the change is said that it increases okay so if this is the object projected at a height h from the from the ground okay initial given an a velocity of projection u this becomes the path. This is the point where it drops on the ground. Then, what is the name given to the total horizontal distance traveled by the body? The range. And that is the range. The, the total time taken by the body, okay, during the whole motion, is what we call as a what? Time of the time of flight. So that good. So the total time taken to cover this journey is what we call as the time of flight capital T. 
Yesterday, we realized that the range is given by, or the range is equal to initial velocity times time, time of life. So, so the velocity of projection times the time of flight. Okay. The velocity of projection times the time of flight. Now, the total horizontal distance, H. The, the total horizontal displacement, H. Can I appear off yourself, mute yourself for us? Can I appear? The total vertical displacement, H, is given by, yes, what is the formula for? Half G T acceleration due to gravity. So half G T, T squared. Square. All right. Okay. Half. So if we want to determine the vertical velocity at any time T, we also realize that the vertical velocity we changes with time at any time t is given by v is equal to v is equal to yes come again the vertical velocity at any time t is given by the initial velocity plus gravity times time but where the initial velocity is what? What's the value of the initial vertical velocity? It's zero. The initial vertical velocity is zero. Yes, it, it, it is determined from this formula. B is equal to UY plus U plus GT. But U initial vertical velocity is zero. And because of that, V is given by G T. Okay. Saida. Len. Saida, Len, mute yourself. We are we are getting um the feedback here. Saida. After call me to come and do the separation. Len. Len, mute yourself for us. Okay. Another way to the, to get the expression for velocity is that v v squared is also equal to u squared plus two j h. We we shall re rejoin. If it's blurry, then it may be from your end. Class, is it a general problem to all of you? No. Mm -hmm. So we shall rejoin for us. Okay. So we can also use this to get an expression for the velocity at any time. Here, because u is zero, v squared will be equal to 2jh, and v is equal to square root of 2jh. In fact, what this formula can give you, what this can give you, let me put them, this one must also give you the same value. It therefore means that this is in terms of time. This formula is in terms of time because G is constant. And this formula is in terms of the vertical height H. But they all must give you the same value. Please, is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. So, so take note of them. Now, one, Sir. one, hello, Amma. Sir, please, so the two velocity formulas are for velocity at a given time. Velo the, yes, the vertical velocity, okay, as the body moves on and on, as it comes here, here, here. So if you are asked to determine the velocity of the body when, when it comes here, using the time T1, this is T2. T3. Then it means that when you use this, V will be equal to G times T1. Okay. When you, when you want the velocity here, V will be equal to G times T2. 
when it before it drops, before it drops, when you want the velocity, the vertical velocity with which it fell, okay, to the ground wave, then it becomes v times uh, g times the time of flight. Am I okay? Yes, please. But if you want to use this, then here. This velocity formula is in terms of height. Don't forget, J is constant, and 2 is also a constant. The only varying value or factor is H. This formula goes with the vertical height covered. So when it is here, that vertical height, that, that vertical displacement, H1. So V will be equal to root of 2J times H1. When it is here, that vertical displacement covered H2. Okay, V is equal to root of 2J times H2. Just before it dropped on the ground, bam, the velocity there will be V is equal to root of 2J times the maximum height H. Okay, so whether you use this or this one, you must get the same results. Are we fine? I can say thank you, sir. All right. One thing, one other thing you have to understand, and uh, one dimensional projectile motion is that at every point, the body has two velocities acting on it. When it's, it's here, there is one velocity, horizontal velocity, which is constant u. Then there's another velocity here, which can be determined by V is equal to GT or V is equal to root of 2GH, H1. So at every time, there are two velocities. When it is here, yes, it is, we have the constant velocity U acting on it, and then another velocity given by V is equal to GT2. Okay. So if the question, there is a question, and you are told to find the velocity after a time, maybe two seconds. Okay. The question is find the velocity after a time, two seconds. Okay. Here, the question is not specific with the kind of velocity. So it means that you have to find the resultant velocity, this one and then this one, which, which when we do vectors or as we move on, you will understand. But you have to understand that at every time, there are two velocities acting on it. Though one is the constant, the horizontal one is constant. The other one is time dependent or high dependent. Please, are we okay? Yes, are we please. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these velocities are not the same. The horizontal one is constant. The vertical one, as time goes by, it increases. Its value will be different from this. So if the question is to find the velocity, you are not asked to find the horizontal velocity. Neither are you asked to find the vertical velocity. It's just the velocity. So it is the, here it is the resultant velocity. As we go on, I will explain. If I bring that in, how to get that, you may be confused. So let's shelve that. And then, but I want you to take note of this fact that at every point before it drops, we have two velocities. Okay, the horizontal one and then the vertical velocity. If you have any question, quickly ask before we continue. Any question? All right. Then let's look at what goes into two-dimensional projectile motion. Two-dimensional
or sometimes you call this as oblique projection. Oblique. Oblique, uh, oblique projection. Now, what is the difference between one-dimensional projectile motion and two-dimensional projectile motion? With one-dimensional projectile motion, if this is the ground, the object is fired from a height h above the ground. So from the ground, the object is positioned at a height h above and the body is given a, an, a horizontal velocity initially. So U initially is purely horizontal. Then falls gradually till it drops to the ground. Um, this is one dimensional projectile motion. So in questions, how do you denote that this question is about one dimension or two dimensional? So a body is given an initial velocity horizontally. Once there is a talk about horizontal velocity given to the body, then we are looking at one dimensional projectile motion. Please, are we okay? Are we okay? Here, we are saying that the velocity u is parallel to the x-axis, the ground, okay? The velocity u initially is parallel to the x-axis or the ground. Okay, two-dimensional. Two In two-dimensional projectile motion, here, the difference is that this is the ground or the x-axis. And the body is given initial velocity in such a way that it makes a certain angle theta with the, with the ground or the x axis. So in two dimensional projectile motion, there is an angle of projection to the x axis or the ground theta. So this is the velocity u. So we say that the velocity of projection, of projection makes an angle, Bushra, are you back? Yes, please. Okay, an angle theta with the x-axis or the horizontal or horizontal. X-axis horizontal is what we are also referring to as the ground. Okay, example, you see during golfing, when the golf ball, when the golf ball is is placed on whatever it is put on, if there is a hole at far end, and you want to hit it so as to drop into the hole, golfers, okay, direct the golf stick at a certain angle and then kick it so that it can move through the air and then drop directly into the hole. So here, the velocity given to the golf ball is at, at a certain angle theta with the, with the ground or the horizontal. Please, are you following? Yes. Are you following? Yes. During footballing, when the ball is on the floor and then there's a wall in front of whoever is kicking the ball. Because there is a wall, you cannot just hit it anyhow. 
If you want the ball to go past the wall, you have to kick the ball at a certain angle. And by doing that, it can be able to move above the wall and go, go beyond it. Two-dimensional projectile motion. During shooting of missiles, those of you who have visited the castle before, when you visit the castle, there is a cannon with the balls. The cannon is put at a, at a, at a certain, is mounted at a, at a certain angle to the ground. So that in those days, when there is an enemy ship, the cannon is loaded with a bullet, fired, and by so doing, it will go and then hit the enemy. Two-dimensional projectile motion. So in all these cases, okay, the velocity given to the um, object, the projectile, makes a certain angle with the ground. During warfare, in, in the shooting of missiles, this is what happens. If you want to hit a target, then you have to shoot the bullet or the missile at an angle to the horizontal before you can hit the target. So in situations where a body is giving an initial velocity, but the velocity makes a certain angle with the with the horizontal or the ground, then we are talking about two-dimensional projectile motion. Please, am I okay? Yes, sir. Yes, please. All right. So I've given you situations where two-dimensional projectile motion is applied. Please take note. All right. Any question? Then let's go into the mathematics of two-dimensional projectile motion. Just as we saw, yes, under projectile motion, being it one-dimension or two-dimensional, the condition is that, or the assumption is, is that we neglect air resistance because air resistance affects projectiles. So we neglect it. So here, that's also the condition. Air resistance is neglected. So here, all that we expect to see is that if this is, if this is the horizontal, the velocity given to the body, the projectile, makes a certain angle theta with the horizontal. Let's assume this is the initial position. In such a situation, the body goes on and on and on, attains a certain maximum value, and then turns, and then finally drops to the ground. drops to the ground. So this is the path in two-dimensional projectile motion. This is the path, the path or the trajectory or the trajectory of the body of the projectile. Let me use of the projectile because projectile is the body. So the body can move here at one point, be here, just to the maximum height, then begin to drop. So it drops on the ground again. And this shape is also parabolic. That is why we say that a projectile motion has a parabolic path or trajectory. So at one point, the object is here.
Let me ask, at t is equal to zero, the body is here. As time increases, t1, the body is here. t2, t3, t4, t5, then t6. The body has dropped to the same level as it was projected. Yeah. Hello? This man with the meaning of parabolic. I, is the is the shape is, okay. is is the shape described by a projectile? This shape is what we call parabolic shape. Is yes. that okay? Yes, please. Thank you very with, much. Don't forget, with one dimension projectile motion, the shape was like this, half of this. Yes. Because that started from a height. This one is starting from the ground, so it described the full shape. So this is a parabola. This is also a parabola. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right. Now, why is it? The reason why it's said to be two-dimensional, apart, yes, apart from the angle thing, the reason why it is two-dimensional is this. Don't forget, I said the body is given an initial velocity u. u, but makes a certain angle with the ground. We are here to do vectors. But if a vector quantity, it can be a force. Let's assume this is a force. If a force is directed along this direction, Okay, if a force F is in this direction, and finally, if a force F is in this direction, meaning there is a ground, it makes an angle theta with the ground. This is what happens. Once the force F is directed horizontally around along the x axis then it means the magnitude of the force is 100% along the x axis please are you okay once mm. once it is along the mm. x axis then the, the the magnitude or the amount of the force is 100% along the x axis so if if you are people pushing something and the direction of push is along the x axis. Your total forces, okay, would completely be along the x axis. Are we okay with that? Yes, please. Two, if a force is along the y axis, we are pushing something vertically upward, and the push is said that it is perpendicular, okay, to the x axis. Then the total forces would 100% be along the x, uh, sorry, y axis. Now, the moment the, the force is exerted at an angle either than, either than 90 or zero, here the force makes an angle of zero degrees with the x axis. Here the force makes an angle of 90 degrees with the um, x axis, okay? Over here, we are saying it's theta. It's none of these two. Then the force will be divided into two components. Okay, parts along the x axis and parts along the y axis. And that's, that's the reason why this kind of motion is termed to be two dimensional projectile motion because the velocity is divided into two aspects. One along the um, horizontal or x as is, and one component along the vertical or y axis. Please, are you okay? So let's look at what is that component along the x axis or the horizontal, and what is that component along the y axis? And that is a very important aspect of two dimensional projectile motion. If you don't understand that, you will mix everything and the projectile two-dimensional projectile motion. So please pay attention and listen with rapt attention. Is that okay? All right? Yes, please. 
Okay. So let's use the force. Then we apply it to our velocity. We have a force, and the force acts at an angle theta to the horizontal. There is a force. This is similar to when boys, we boys, when we, when a car is attached, a string is attached to a car and pushed. There is a string. Okay, there is a car. So the car is being pushed, but you realize that the string attached to the car makes a certain angle theta with with the horizontal. So when you have a force acting in this manner, you realize that if you, I think last time in our last meeting, we did something about trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, and so on and so forth. Yes. So if I have, if I have a right angle triangle, okay. Okay, let me bring this part here. So here, this is the angle, theta. The force is along the hypotenuse, or in our case, this is the string. Okay. If I want this component, this component, let me call it Y, and if I want this component, X, how do you determine it? If you are given a force, the force is F. The angle it makes with the horizontal is theta. If you want this component, the, what we call as the Y component, and what here we are calling as the X component, how do we determine it? Yes. What, what do you think will be the horizontal component? And how do we determine that? Can somebody share, share it with me? Say yes. It is for the horizontal, the vertical component. Mm -hmm. We we'll use the same rule. So sign. Thank you, Ama. But the correct, for, the, the correct thing is sign. Okay. So we use the trig uh, ratio sign. So sign of uh, the angle uh, in the question. So sign. Theta, the angle is theta. Sine is so opposite over what? Opposite over what? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So sine theta, my opposite is unknown. My hypotenuse is divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is F. So divided by F. Because I'm looking for the unknown, I have to make that as a subject. Please help me make the unknown as a subject. Hello. Yes, I know we we'll do this under vectors. We we'll, we'll do this under vectors, but we are just applying, okay? So when we get there, you get a chance to understand. We'll do vectors right after projectile motion, so don't worry. So we want to make the, the question mark, the unknown, the subject. How do we do that? Yes, somebody should quickly help me. The question Say. mark is equal to yes. Multiply sine by f. Sine theta times the first. So we multiply through by f, OK? So this yes. side times F and this side times F. So F will cancel at the other end. So we we'll have the question might be called F sine theta. So it means that the vertical component of this force, which makes an angle theta with the horizontal is F sine theta. Let's look for the horizontal component. This side, the horizontal component. 
what strip ratio do we use to find the horizontal component? Yes. What appropriate trig ratio do we use to find the horizontal component or the adjacent to the angle? Hello, class, I'm waiting. Um, cosine. So we use cosine, okay? So what is cosine? Cos, the cosine of an angle is equal to, yes, what's the ratio? Cosine is adjacent over so hypotenuse. So adjacent, yes, adjacent which we are looking for, divided by the hypotenuse, which is F. When we make the unknown, which is the adjacent, the subject, we have this equal to F cos of theta, right? And so this becomes this component. So the component, the horizontal component is F cos theta. This is the direction. And then this is the direction. And so what it means is that Meanwhile, you see, oh, meanwhile, if this force had been zero, parallel to the horizontal, F, we wouldn't have two components. We would just have one component, which is along the X axis. But we are getting vertical and horizontal component because it is acting at an angle theta to the horizontal. Please, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes. yes, please. So what it means is that whenever a quantity makes an angle theta, either than 90 and zero, either than 90, 270, zero, 180 or 360, Okay, but it is at any other angle, there will be component. This is zero. This is zero. If if I can here, yeah, this is 90 degrees. This is 270. Sorry. Zero 090. Zero 90. This is 180. 180. This is 270. And then 360. Turns back to it. So if it is along this, the angle is either zero or 360. If it comes here, this is 190. If it comes here, okay, 180 and then 270. So long as it is along the force or the vector is along any of these, we we'll have one component. We we'll have one component. But whenever it comes in between any of these angles, this, 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 or that, we have two components. That is what I'm trying to say. If the vector, the force, the velocity acceleration is along any of these, one, two, three, four, we'll have just one component. But when it comes in between, and the in between is what we are only representing as theta. Please, class, are we okay? Yes, are we please. Yes, please. Okay, let me, let me take water and get back to you. If you have any question, get it ready. When I come, you ask me. I'll just, in one, in one minute, I will join you. I'm back from the commercial break. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what we have here is like 
theta is anything in between this quadrant from 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, all that. So theta represents, this theta represents anything of this sort, right? Now let's apply it to our projectile motion. So because the velocity of projection u makes an angle theta with the horizontal, this is the velocity. U makes an angle theta with the horizontal. It means that this velocity will, div will be divided into two components. One component along the horizontal, then another component along the vertical. The horizontal components will be equal to u cos theta. Similar to what we just saw, the horizontal component is f cos theta. And here it is f because we're using forces. Here it is u because we are using velocity. <laughs> Okay. Ama. Yes. Ama, mute yourself. So, because the velocity of projection makes an angle theta with the horizontal, we have. Hey, <laughs> I'm surprised my my host keeps on changing. <laughs> All right. So. We we'll have u cos theta along the horizontal and u sine theta along the vertical. So this is what we we'll have: u cos theta and then u sine theta because of the fact that the velocity makes an angle theta. Velocity of projection based on angle theta with the horizontal. So this divides, u divides into two components, u cos theta and u sin theta. Hence, two-dimensional projectile motion. Hence, the name two-dimensional projectile motion. Can I continue? Yes, please. Come again. Please, I'm confused. Confused, confused, confused. Wait. Confused with? The two-dimensional projectile motion. What I'm saying is that this velocity u, velocity of projection, there's a body we are pushing, OK? This body is given a velocity, u. But the velocity is not straight. The velocity makes an angle theta. Don't forget, if it is straight, it will move along the horizontal. If it is straight, it will move vertically. But it is at an angle. And so it would move along this, get to the maximum height and turn. OK, now because you act at an angle theta, it will be divided into two components. The vertical component, the vertical component, and then the horizontal component. And that's the reason why this is termed as two-dimensional projectile motion because the velocity of projection is divided into two components. Are you okay? Yes, please. All right. In, in projectile motion, we analyze it both horizontally and vertically. Because look, look at, look at something. Even though we saw that in yesterday's meeting, but let me take you through. You see, when the body is here, we can trace its displacement from its original part. This is the original part, original position of the body. But when it is here, how much has the body been displaced from its original position horizontally? When we trace it, this is it. 
we realize that it is uh, it is displaced by this amount horizontally. So this is x1. When it comes here, how much is the body displaced from its original position horizontally? When we trace it, this is it. From the from the original position to its new position, this is it. X2. X3. X4. X5. Then so it drops on the ground. This is the maximum. X6 is the maximum horizontal displacement. And the maximum horizontal distance covered is what we call as a what? The maximum horizontal distance covered by the body is what we technically call as what? The range. The range. So the same as what we were looking at yesterday. We can do the same thing for vertical. If the body is here, how much is it displaced from its initial position vertically? This is it, H1. If it comes here, from here to here, H2. H3, H4, H5. So it drops on the ground. And so because of these changes horizontally and vertically, we analyze projectile motions both horizontally and vertically as we did yesterday. Please, are we okay? All right. Do I clear this part? Because I'm going to do some no, calculations. Hurry up. This is just to explain to you the horizontal and vertical displacement at any time. Draw my attention when you finish. <laughs> Okay. So let's look at horizontal analysis first. It's not different from what we were doing yesterday. Slide changes. Horizontal analysis. Horizontally, we said this is the initial component. The velocity along the horizontal is u cos theta. Horizontally, one air resistance is neglected under projectile motion, whether horizontally or vertically. Air resistance is neglected. Then, two, gravity has no effect horizontally. So if air resistance is neglected, if gravity has no effect, then when we are seeing the body, the body's changes, displacement, or velocity along the horizontal will never change because there is nothing there to reduce the velocity along the horizontal. So u cos theta, we say, is the initial horizontal velocity. So ux is equal to u cos theta. x to denote that it is along the X axis or horizontal axis. U to denote it is initial. Now, if air resistance, gravity is not affecting the body horizontally, then there's nothing in there which could 
reduce the speed. The body is not on the ground for it to be affected by friction. Within the air, air resistance would reduce it. This is what is neglected, it's not there. Moreover, force of gravity does not affect the body horizontally. So it means along the horizontal, there's nothing to reduce the speed. Hence, the initial velocity will be equal to the final velocity. So ux will be equal to vx, and they will all be equal to u cos theta. So just as we saw in one-dimensional projectile motion, the velocity horizontally is constant. Why is it constant? Because initial uh, gravity and air resistance does not affect the body horizontally. And so because there's no variable to reduce the speed, what we start with is what we end with. Please, am I clear here? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, so that's why ux is equal to vx and they are all equal to u cos theta. So that is the velocity analysis horizontally, meaning velocity is constant horizontally. Yeah, by you here. Yeah, by. Okay, it's constant horizontally. Now, I want a formula for the horizontal displacement with time, x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on and so forth. How do I determine the horizontal displacement? I know velocity to be equal to distance or displacement over time. Okay, so when I make S the subject, I have V times T. What it means is that if I'm look if I'm to look for X1, all that I do is that X1, which is the first displacement, will be equal to the velocity, the constant velocity horizontal, which is U cos theta times the time taken to come to this point, which is T1. If I want X2, when it comes to this point, yes, how do I determine it? Lizzie? Lizzie Addison, I want X2. How do I calculate X2? Lizzie? Lizzie, I'm waiting. I want X2. How do I determine X2? U sine theta times time. So what's Eight. the time? What's the time? Time two. T2. So U cos theta, because for U cos theta is constant. Times T2. If I want X6, X6, and we see, I want X6. So it will be um, U cos theta times T6. U cos theta times T6. T6. And Access is the total horizontal distance. And so we give this a special name, range. So it means that the range is equal to the constant u cos theta times t6 is the total time taken. And this, we are giving it that special name, time of flight, capital T. Are we okay? Yes. yes, please. So this is similar to 
one dimension. In one dimension, the rate is equal to u cos theta. Uh, sorry, u times time of flight. But here, because there is an angular term, the range is u cos theta times the time of flight. Take note. Right? Meaning, in between, before the range, any horizontal displacement, you can determine it by u cos theta times the time. All right. Now, so we've discussed the velocity. We've discussed the range displacement. Somebody would ask, okay, sir, we learned, let me draw your attention to this. We learned about some equation of motion. U V is equal to U plus A T. Now, U, because you said it's constant, can we use this? Yes, we can use this. But when we use this, the expression for the velocity, this is how it's going to be. The initial horizontal velocity is constant, and that is u cos theta plus, what do you think is the acceleration here horizontally? What do you think is the acceleration? Yes. Hello. Zero. Why? Why? Why is it zero? zero? Why? Because it's moving around a straight line. Hey, I won't buy that. I won't buy that as to why it's zero. Mm -hmm. Because gravity does not have. Because velocity is constant. Okay, along the horizontal, velocity is constant. So this is A is zero. Once this is zero, forget about whatever time. So you end up having the final velocity being equal to U cos theta, the same as what we got here for Vx. With regards to the distance, With regards to the distance, somebody may, oh, let's find this distance, the, the um, displacement, horizontal displacement using S is equal to UT plus half AT squared, which is true. All right. Let's see. If we want to find the displacement x1. It means u is u cos theta and the time is t1 plus what do you think will happen to this side? To become zero. Why? Why? Because the velocity is constant. Because the acceleration is zero. Yes, the because the velocity is constant or acceleration is zero. Good. So, this will be zero. We'll still have the displacement being equal to u cos theta times t, which is the same as what we've had for uh, the displacement at any time t. So that is why we are not using any of the equations of motion by just using this, the average velocity kind of the, the, to find our v. Are we OK? All right. And so this is the vertical uh, horizontal analysis. Let's move on to the vertical analysis. Uh, in fact, Hillary, if 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 you don't, it's because you were not around yesterday. We, we are connecting what we did yesterday to. So if you missed out on that, unless I book a time with you. So you.
communicate with me off okay on my direct whatsapp page we'll see to how to i mean help you okay i'll see to that right so those of you who are not so clear because you missed out you communicate to me on my whatsapp page i'll look for a time maybe during the weekend to help you out okay So vertical analysis. U cos theta is the initial horizontal velocity. And the other component, U sine theta, is the initial vertical velocity. U y will be equal to U sine theta. So this is the initial vertical velocity. You see, because of the angle, um, this was divided into, U was divided into this part and this part. This is the initial horizontal velocity, and this other part is the initial vertical velocity. Please, are we okay with this? Yes. Okay. Now, when we are looking at it vertically, over here, yes, we can neglect air resistance, but we can never neglect gravity. Gravity would always affect you vertically. For horizontally, you have no problem, but when the body is going up, then gravity will show you that I'm the master here. Is that okay? So we cannot, vertically, we cannot eliminate gravity. And so, so long as gravity is there, it will affect the body trying to go up. And how is it, how will gravity affect the body? Yes, how will the gravity affect the body as it goes up? Yes. How will it affect the body as the body goes up? In what aspect of the body's feature will it be affected yes yes say it whatever you are thinking of is correct share with me kelly kelly um aduma appear uh -huh. how would gravity affect the body oh your line is faint i think so it would affect the body's velocity. Simply as it. Okay. So it will affect the body's velocity. And how will it affect it? Will it increase it or decrease it? It will decrease. Exactly. So the body's velocity with time would always be affected. Velocity with time will always be affected as the body is going up. So when you shoot it, okay, as it goes, it goes up, this velocity will be decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. It will decrease to a certain point. That is when it gets to the maximum uh, height, its velocity will be reduced to zero. Then when it is dropping, because this time it is moving in the line of gravity, its velocity will begin to increase. So it would it would decrease progressively to zero, then increase gradually, gradually. By the time it hits on the floor, it is hitting the floor with that maximum velocity. The interesting thing is that if it starts from, if it, it begins with a velocity of maybe 100, it will be decreasing. 99, 98, blah, blah, blah. By the time it gets to the maximum height, it has reduced to zero. When it is coming back from zero, it will be increasing. Zero, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. By the time it drops on the ground, its velocity is the same as what it started with here. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. All right. So, you sine theta is the initial vertical velocity. I want 
the velocity you said it it will be decreasing which we have agreed okay we have all agreed yes it will decrease but how do i calculate the velocity when the body is here when it is here on and on and on using v is equal to u minus dt we can find the velocity at any given time t and this is minus because the the body the projector is going up isn't it yes it is minus because yes. it's move it's moving against gravity or it's decelerating hence the deceleration is minus so v is equal to the initial vertical velocity which is this u sine theta minus g t if i want the velocity at this point the time there is t1 so t1 if i want the velocity here v is equal to u sine theta minus g t2 okay by the time it gets to this point, and I'm saying, I'm looking at this point as a maximum height, the velocity there will be zero. So this part will be equal to this part and they will all reduce to zero. Now, after reducing the velocity or having the velocity reduced to zero, at the other half, when the body is coming down, this time, the formula becomes V is equal to U sine theta plus JT. Plus, because this time the body is moving in the direction of gravity. So that's how to calculate for the velocity at different, different um, times. Are we okay? That's so, so all that we are saying is that the velocity of the body at any given time t is equal to u sine theta minus j t. And take note of this. So that is the ve uh, velocity analysis of what happens vertically. Any question before we move on to um, displacement and then we look at acceleration. Okay, Adam, I'm waiting for you. Okay. Yes, um, uh, uh, if you have watching here. All right, let's move on to the displacement. For horizontal analysis, the displacement is time dependent, depends on time because u cos theta is constant. Okay. So let's look at the displacement. How do I get formula or relation for the vertical displacement at any time t? Using s is equal to u t minus half j t squared. We can get a relation for the displacement. So because here we are talking about vertical height h, let's use h instead of x. What is u? u is the initial vertical velocity, which is u sine theta. So u sine theta times t. And t is a, is a time at every position. So if I'm looking for this, h1, the time must be t1. So this must be t1, and this must also be h1. Minus half j times t1 squared. So h1, t1. Are we okay? 
Yes, please. If I want Say. hello. Say please the time. It hasn't changed to time of flight. No, that we are not there yet. We are here. The body is here. And we are looking for H1. Okay. So we write the normal C1. Yes. So H1 Five goes two. with the time taking. Okay, for this vertical displacement, T1. So if I want T2, uh, H2, the same thing. H2 is equal to U sine theta times T2 minus half J T2 squared. Are you okay? Yes, please. So all that we are saying is that Generally, if you are looking for the vertical displacement of the body, it must be H is equal to U sine theta T minus half J T, where T represents any time, any time, okay, T of the body's position. Plus, are we okay? Yes please. yes, please. Okay. Tell me about the acceleration of the body. So this is uh, the analysis of the displacement H vertically. What will you say about the acceleration of the body? As... You forgot to square the time. Pardon? You forgot to square the time. Um, H is equal to U sine theta T minus half T squared. Oh, okay. What will you say about the body's acceleration when it's going up? Will it accelerate or decelerate? Decelerate. And when it is dropping? It would accelerate. Accelerate. Okay, so that's it. Horizontally, acceleration is zero, but when we are looking at the vertical analysis, the body will decelerate and then accelerate. Can I clean this side of the board? Yes. Yes. Take note that under two-dimensional projectile motion, under two-dimensional projectile motion, the velocity at any time t varies. So, when the body is here, it has it possesses two different velocities: a horizontal one, which is constant, u cos theta, and then a vertical one, which is time dependent u sine theta minus dt. Okay, we saw that in, when it comes here, when it is dropping, yes, we still have that constant horizontal velocity. And we, we also have this time dependent velocity, u sine theta plus dt, or so minus gt. Now, when it gets to the maximum height, let's assume there's a maximum height. Over here, how many velocities will be on the body? Yes. At the maximum height, how many velocities would act on the body? One. Yeah. Why one? Um, so if it actually reach the maximum height, it will only have um vertical velocity. Well, that's Ahmed's view. What is a PS view? What is a, a Addison's view? Kelly's view? Kirsten's view? Yes, yeah, share with me. Am I saying that when it when it comes here? Sir. Yes. Please, sorry, no, it's a bit too. Why? 
because when it reaches the maximum height, we will get its horizontal velocity as well as its vertical velocity. Anyway, that's Amen's view again. Yes. Abia <laughs> Aduma. <laughs> Yes. Oh. All right. Uh -huh, we are. We are, your line is break. Your line is breaking. Oh, sorry. You think you think there will be no velocity on the body? Okay, let me let me call on Kelly. Kelly, what do you think? Yes, what when the body gets to the maximum height, how many velocities would act on the body and why? Sir, please, I think it mm -hmm. will only have um vertical velocity. Mm, it will only have vertical velocity. Mm, so there will be because, one velocity. Yes, only one velocity. Okay. Any different view? All right. Yes, then let me judge. Yes, Hello. Please, the, question the, the question is that we realize when the body is here, okay, there is a horizontal velocity given by U cos theta on the body. There is a vertical velocity given by u sine theta minus gt. Okay. Now, when it is dropping, when it is dropping over here, okay, we have u cos theta is constant. The horizontal velocity is constant. Yes. And we still have the vertical velocity, which is u sine theta minus gt. Okay. Then we are judging what happens when it gets to the maximum height. We are saying this is the maximum height reached by the body. So this is H maximum. How many velocities will act on the body at the maximum height? Please, I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, Akusha, I'm listening. Zero. You think it will be zero? Yes. Okay. Let me judge. As the body goes up, what happens to the velocity? It decreases. It is decreasing. So over here it will decrease. When it can decrease, if there's another location here, it will decrease. By the time it gets to the maximum height, what is what happens to the velocity? The vertical velocity. It's zero. So it's zero. Okay. It, it will be zero. Okay, so when it gets to the maximum height, Vy is equal to zero. But I just told you that the horizontal velocity is what? Constant. Constant. So how many velocities would act on the body at the maximum height? Yeah. That's one. That's one. And that is the U, U cos theta component. So at the maximum height, you can't say the velocity is zero, but all, all that you have to say is that the vertical velocity is zero, but the horizontal velocity is not zero. It's constant at any point. Is that okay? Yes. Good. So this, these are the details you need to understand under projectile motion. Else, when we say it, you can't see. All right. So let's look at some standard equations. Standard equations. If you recall, and a vertically upwards and downward motion, you will got the time of flight, the time taken to reach the maximum height to be equal to, yes, we, we did that last semester. So let's recall. The time taken to reach the maximum height is equal to, Initial velocity over gravity. Good. So U over G. Please, we used the first equation. V is equal to U minus GT. 
And we are saying that at the maximum height at h max, the velocity, the final velocity is equal to zero. So if v is equal to zero, when you substitute here, you have zero is equal to u minus j t. When you make t the subject, you have u on g. Okay, and this is a time taking to reach the maximum height. Okay, then we derive the expression for the maximum height, h max. And that is equal to, what did we have for mm -hmm. the maximum, the maximum height? We are recapping on h max. The formula for the maximum height is so. You've forgotten. We got u squared over 2g. Because here we considered h is equal to ut. I think we took the other one, v squared. V squared is equal to u squared minus 2jh. OK. So if this is it, at the maximum height, v is 0. If v is 0, then 0 is equal to u squared minus 2jh. Therefore, 2jh is equal to u squared, and h is equal to u squared over 2g. Please, are you OK? Are you okay? Yes, please, please. Good. So we have something similar under projectile motion. And that is what we are going to look at. If, if, if you are done writing, can I clean this? Yes. Okay. So standard equation when it comes to projectile motion. When the body gets to the maximum height, when the body gets to the maximum height, at the maximum height, the final vertical velocity is equal to zero. So at, at the maximum height, We are saying that h at the maximum height v y is equal to zero because it will decelerate by the time it gets to the maximum height it has decelerated okay to a point that its final velocity is zero so v y is zero now if v y is zero then using V is equal to U sine theta minus J T. This is what we are equating to zero. This is actually V Y. If V Y is zero, then we have zero is equal to U sine theta minus J T. Please, let's make T the subject here. Help me make T the subject. <laughs> Are we tired? No, we'll finish soon, please. So let's finish. Yes. V is, v is equal to. to U sine theta all over G. Okay. So, so T is equal to U sine theta all oh. over G. And this we call as the time taken to reach the maximum height.
the time taken to reach the maximum height. You see, and a vertically upward motion, we saw that T will be equal to U over G. So similar. But here, we are multiplying the sign of the angle as well. So they are so, so, so similar. But we are just taking account of the angle. Adua Otubi, are you there? Yes, please. So the time taken to reach the maximum height is given by u sine theta over g. So and the projectile motion, two-dimensional projectile motion, whenever you are asked to calculate the time taken to reach the maximum height, oh, all that you need is u sine theta over g. You don't. You need not to worry yourself so much. Are we okay? Two. So this is what it means. The time taken for the body to move from here uh, and get to this point. So it will take this time. This time taken to come here is what we call as the time taken to reach the maximum height. Please, what do you think will be the expression for the time of flight? The total time taken to move from here, get to the maximum height, from there and drop to the ground. What do you think will be the formula for the time of flight, capital T? Uh, right. Okay, since the time of flight is twice the time. It will be twice you sign theta all over here. Exactly. Okay. If you if you look at it carefully, thank you, uh, yeah. The time, if you look at it from here to the maximum height, is the same as from the maximum height back to the ground. So if it's taking this time to move from here and come to this point. Then it will take the same time to move from here to the ground. So the time of flight is simply two times this. Two times u sine theta over g. Please, does it make sense? Yes. 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 So this is simply two u sine theta all over g and that, this is the time of flight time of flight time of flight Then, and, uh, we are looking for an expression, a formula for the maximum height and a vertically upward motion. We saw that the maximum height is equal to u squared over 2g. u squared over 2g. Let's see what we can deduce for projectile motion. So if I want anything maximum um, vertical height, we saw that that would be u sine theta t minus half j t squared. So if I'm looking for this maximum height, h, okay, how do I do it? Or I can get that using v squared is equal to using v squared u squared minus 2jh. Now my u is u is um u sine theta all squared minus 2jh. Please 
And we know that at the maximum height, at we are looking for this. And at the maximum height, at the maximum height, the important condition is that the, the vertical velocity is equal to zero. So if V is equal to zero, please substitute that into this and help me make H the subject. Yes. Do that and then tell me what you have. Are we there? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So what did you get for H? The H is equal to U sine theta all squared all over 2G. Good. So, so U sine theta, put that into bracket, square it, all divided by 2G. And look at, compare it with this. Under vertical uh, upward motion, the expression for the maximum uh, height covered. So, so, so similar, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, yes. You can also use this to get an, uh, the formula, the same formula. Finish writing this and let me take you through this. Then we solve one or two questions because we are tired of the calculation. Are you done writing that? Okay. Okay. Can we continue? Yes, please. All right. We can use this to get the same thing. How do we do it? Here, substitute T equal to U sine theta into this, into the equation. So we have H is equal to U sine theta times U sine theta over G minus half J U sine theta over G all squared. I want you to multiply square and then play around it. And let's see if you come out of um, our way. H is equal to U sine theta R squared over 2G. Play around this. 
multiply this by this, square this. Okay, let's see if you, you can be able to derive this. Five minutes. There's a problem of the afternoon. Hello. Hello. Uh -huh. Did you get it? Okay. Let's see it. You are multiplying this by that. So you have u times u, u squared. Sine theta times sine theta. This is equal to sine theta all squared. Divided by G, isn't it? Yes. Minus 1 over 2 G. This is all that we have within the bracket squared. So we have U sine theta squared over G squared. We, you got it? Yes. Hooray. Okay, so u squared sine theta squared over g minus this is what we have 
जय यू साइन चीता स्क्वायर ओवर जे स्क्वायर बट दिस जे स्क्वायर इज एक्चुअली जे बाय जे सो दिस जे वन ऑफ इट वो कैंसिल इट आर वी ओके आर वी ओके यस प्लीज गो सो वी हैव यू साइन चीता ओके लेट मी टेक माय टाइम स्क्वायर all square do over g minus u squared this time around we are squared everything within the bracket are you okay so u squared then we square sin theta sin theta squared divided by 2 j don't forget this has been cancelled so we are left with 1 g When you look at the numerator, this and this, okay, are common. So we can factorize out u squared sine theta squared over g. Let's factorize that out. U squared sine theta squared over g out. We have one in one in because we have factorized out this one minus. One over two, because we've pulled out the denominator. J is out. The numerator is out. So this will be left with one. This will also be left with one over two. Please, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, please. Now, what is one minus half? What half. is one? That's half. So, within the brackets, we'll be left with half. Let me clear this part. So, u squared sine theta r squared all over g times half. Over here, multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. U squared sine theta r squared divided by two g, and you get the same thing as we have here yeah, because there's a square here. Then you can put everything within a bracket and then square everything. So this is how you can. Okay, but the important thing is that understand that for h max, the maximum height reached, the maximum height reached by the body, it is equal to u sine theta over two g. Ah, uh, u sine theta squared over two g. Please, are we okay? All right. Yeah. I gave you some yeah. couple of questions yesterday. I sent you um some questions on one dimensional motion. Let me give you let me give you an area, one of them to solve and then send to me, okay? So um let's check on our phone. Go go to the platform. I want to direct you to uh, draw your attention to the one I expect that you do and send to me. Okay, so there are some questions with answers. Look, when you look at one of them, that an aeroplane traveling at a height of 1.8 meters, the last question, The last question, and then the and and the a bullet is fired horizontally. Please, are you there? Have you noticed the question? Yes, please. Yes, the answers are there, but I want you to solve. Let me see how you would solve and then get those answers. So you are looking at that question, okay? The question on the aeroplane, and then the question on the bullet. The first part is what is a trajectory. 
the trajectory is the path taken by a, a, a projectile. Okay. So answer that question, these two questions, and then send your solution to me, please. This time, I wouldn't entertain a situation where you would be a silent in submission of assignment. I would um put on the platform a submission list. So please make time and then do that for me. Is that okay? So we are we are left with about nine minutes for um to end the lesson. I'm leaving you with the nine minutes. Look at it. Okay, use the time to look at how you get the questions. And I'll give you a, the, the deadline must be Monday. By Monday, let me have your work. Is that okay? So that I can also respond to you. Please, class, is that okay? Yes, please. Yes, please. Your parents are on the platform. If you don't do it, I will tell them and they will see. So until then, please, this is where I draw the curtain. I draw the curtains on today's meeting. Thanks for being around. Thanks for your cooperation. And thanks for assuring me that you are going to send your work. Bye-bye.